they're all of those. Milo is a classic example. He's an amazing person. I mean, he's, he's a contradiction. He's a walking contradiction. You can't pin that guy down, right? Like, what is he, half Jewish, half English, gay, uh, Catholic. provocateur, Catholic, who's, who's, who's really, who's, yeah, who loves black guys and who, who, and who, who, is, who appeals to American Republicans. It's like, what are you going to say about something, somebody like that? It's like, he's a, he's a, he's a trickster figure, archetypally speaking, you know, and he's, he's a provocateur and a comedian. And the funny thing about comedians, they're like jesters in the king's court. The jester was the only person who could tell the truth because he was beneath contempt. And th that's the role that comedians and provocateurs play. They're poking, they're poking and laughing and, and making fun. And, you know, Milo, Christ, he even dresses like a, a, what do you call those, a harlequin. You know, he's a trickster. And trickster figures emerge in times of crisis. And they point out what no one wants to see. And they say things that no one will say. And you can say all the terrible things about him. He is a provocateur. He's an egomaniac. He's a, he, I don't think he's narcissistic. But, uh, because he has the real capacity for self-reflection. But, uh, and he's brave as can be. I mean, and, and he's unstoppable on his feet. He just amazes me. I've never seen anyone ever, I don't think, and I've met some pretty damn smart people, I've never seen anyone who can take on an onslaught of criticism and reverse it like he can. It's bloody amazing. But he is all those things you describe. But, you know, the times call forth the, the speakers, and we've called forth Milo. And that, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, and that tells you what our times are. So M Milo's been on my show, and he's supposed to come again soon. Uh, he's, a, he's exactly the things that Jordan said. Uh, at times, he, he has an ability to depart from truth. He was speaking <laughs> right. So for example, when he says things like, there is no such thing as lesbians. Uh, <laughs> well, I, I appreciate his provocateur nature, but then it, it'd be nice to stay closer to the truth. But to the extent that he is getting a lot of young people engaged, probably more than Jordan and I could uh, you know, in, in our lifetimes, a lot of people are associating to him, and so his central message is truly important. So even if once in a while he makes a departure from truth, uh, I'll grant him that because his greater uh, raison d'etre is quite important. So I certainly support him. Jordan Peterson is getting the Milo treatment. Maybe by now you've seen that amazing car crash interview on Channel 4, and if you haven't, um watch the end of this and then immediately go to YouTube and find the 27 or the 29 minute version because it's amazing. Now Jordan Peterson is able to do what most of us only dream about which is, and I've done it myself in interviews on occasion but I don't always get it right. I have been on Channel 4 with Kathy Newman who is a sort of hyper 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 feminist uh, British presenter and she asked me some of the same questions with some of the same interview technique. Now, what Kathy Newman does, and I don't know because I haven't worked out whether this is all part of a clever strategy to get right-wingers to say weird and wacky and outrageous things. But what she'll do is she'll listen to a nuanced and complex answer to a contentious and emotionally charged subject. Let's say the wage gap or campus rape culture. And she'll listen for sort of trigger words and then she'll restate the the she'll, she, it's not even restating your argument. What she does is she uses a few words to construct an outrageous. So what you're saying is X statement, which is has no relation whatsoever to what your original claim was. So you might say something like, "Well, if you perform a multivariate analysis, you discover actually that the you know the wage gap is there for a variety of reasons, not just sex, and certainly not just discrimination, but women's choices, different educational choices, women's priorities, and and, so, and she'll and so she'll she'll cut you off and respond something like. So what you're saying is there's no point uh, trying to fight for equality because it's never going to happen and women should just get used to uh, not being equal. And it's very difficult to respond to that kind of interviewing. And it's, I don't know whether that's a result of, of... She's either brilliant or actually her IQ is 75. Either way, it's, it's, it's effective when you're interviewing um, uh, right-wingers. because she, or Well, anyone really, because she's able to... Uh, caricature your position in the most grotesque terms in a very aggressive way that is designed to kind of get under people's skin. Now, Jordan Peterson gave a half an hour interview about a variety of different things. He has a new book coming out, um, his, his Guide to Life or 12 Steps to Happiness or whatever it is. Um, he's got a new book coming out. He's talking about the wage gap. He's talking about, you know, equality, all kinds of things like that. And she's throwing these weird, crazy 
they're not they're not summaries of his positions because they're actually in many cases the opposite of what he believes. She's listening for the for keywords or terms and throwing out aggressive, baseless questions designed to make him sound nuts. So she's asking, "So you believe this?" No, I never said that. Here's what I believe. So you believe this? No, I never said that. And this goes on for about half an hour, and it's absolutely gripping if you're really into this kind of stuff like I am. And if you're not, it's actually very bad television, but it it demonstrates one of the strategies that they use to interview um, those of us who understand that not everything is really super simple, and you can't just say... Um, oh, there's a wage gap of 9%, the world must stop turning until we fix it. it. Those of us who want to talk about equality of outcome versus equality of opportunity, women's different educational choices, yada, yada, yada. Um, there's sort of subtlety and complexity that modern feminism does not permit, and certainly feminism on television doesn't get, let you get away with. This is the stuff that um, can get people into trouble. Anyway, look, so... <laughs> This interview, grueling, half an hour viewing, it's either great television or a brilliant evisceration, a car crash for her, depending on your pr perspective. But what happened afterwards was even more telling, even more telling than her interview technique. So it's a perfect lesson, by the way, this is, and, and this is a per I'm, I'm going to talk to you later in the show about how this stuff works and why they do this. But I want to draw your attention to a Twitter thread from um, a user called Cheeky Scrump, uh, who gets it exactly right. And I'm going to read you out what he said. He said, Kathy Newman got crushed on broadcast TV, and they reframe, they're reframing her being laughed at as vicious, misogynistic abuse. That's not abuse from Peterson, but that's abuse from the comment section afterwards. People basically saying, ha ha, you got owned or whatever, or, you know, whatever it is, wrecked. Um, this is, this is um, we're going to talk in a minute about what exactly that abuse really looks like versus how it's reported in the press. Uh, but this user, Cheeky Scrum, I don't know who he is. He seems to be like a, a Dungeons & Dragons fan who also has great insight into gender politics. Um, must be a Gamergate guy. Uh, this is how the media will go after Peterson. You can bet your ass they'll never allow him on TV again because he destroyed them. The Guardian, doing stellar propaganda work as always, is saying Jordan Peterson has a large following in the, quote, alt-right, end quote, who, uh, who fucking hate and mock him. Let me spell out exactly how this is going to go, says the user on Twitter. I'm going to read to you a page of his. This is because what he's done is he's seen it happen to me and now he's seen it happen to Jordan Peterson. And now he's created this roadmap. Um, and it's, it's the neatest explanation of this that I've ever seen, including in my own columns. So I'm going to read the whole thing to you. Um, Channel 4 and Kathy Newman know they got obliterated in that debate and they aren't happy with their narrative being destroyed. There's going to be a media campaign to prevent this happening again. Step one, which is where we are now, change the conversation from the loss of the debate to vile online abuse, having uh, the debate, the, the, excuse me, the vile online abuse that the debate has caused. Channel 4 are making a big show of this, hiring a security agent. They were very public about the fact they'd have to hire a security agent for Kathy Newman, but they're showing no evidence of the threats. Step one, part two, we're still here. The, um, the articles that are coming out about it, this huge media furore about the supposedly misogynistic abuse that the presenter is getting, Allow the media to frame Jordan Peterson as being transphobic or, or hateful or whatever, and they, and they help lies like him being alt-right because they'll try to associate the worst of what's happening on the internet with him just because like, we're all, of course, totally responsible for everything that all of our fans say at all times. Um, this removes people from the primary source video and controls the narrative about what Jordan Peterson believes. So what they're doing is they're saying, well, because... Jordan Peterson is surrounded by a load of harassers and abusers and threateners on the internet. That's what he believes too. He's just as bad as all of them. Now let's talk about how bad that abuse was. Interestingly, in this conversation, the question of what was said in the debate and who won and who said what and who you agree with is starting to become a bit muddier because the attention isn't on that anymore. The attention is not on what was on television, what was said. Uh, you know, the attention is now on the story around this show. So step two, says this guy, um, Peterson will be asked to disavow his own fan base and he'll be conflated with any and all abuse online that women receive. He his refusal to roll over in the face of this will be framed as an endorsement of harassment and the more naked agenda naked agended media will carry endless hit pieces absolutely true happened to me it's now happening to him 
Having Jordan Peterson on a TV show or at an event will be reframed as dangerous to women or endorsing a harasser, and he will be banned from UK events and interviews, um, and his events will be cancelled due to safety. Does that sound familiar to anyone? It should, because there was a uh, mischievous homosexual fag who was experiencing just this same thing in June 2015 and all the way, ever, ever since, right up until today. So, uh, you know, this, this, what this demonstrates is great that this is happening. What this demonstrates is not just me. Being out there, being crazy, upsetting people, trolling people, you know, having this band of, of whatever uh, following me around everywhere that makes it impossible to interview me or impossible, whatever. This is not a Milo problem. This is a left problem. This is a problem of their own invention and fabrication, their own making. And now they're doing it to Jordan Peterson, who is way more mild mannered than I am. Far more beyond reproach than I am. I know that I upset people on, a, on purpose, and I'm perfectly happy to admit it. But Jordan Peterson is up there in Christina Hoff Summers' territory. So they're doing it to him too. Um, step four. Peterson's mere presence on social media and YouTube will be called into question. Well, there we go. That's exactly what happened to me, isn't it? Um, Calls will be made for his hateful rhetoric that encourages harassment to be banned from the internet. Marxist trans advocates are already doing this, but online media will follow suit. It's the same old strategy from the far left. If you lose a debate, reframe their arguments as harassment and ban, harass, and smear the person making them. They did this at full force to Milo, says the guy. The Belfast Telegraph released a headline. Um, I got all this, by the way, from, um, from this Twitter account, and there's a great blog post I'll tell you about in a minute. Um, the Belfast Telegraph says this, the anti-snowflake crusader. To his fans, Canadian psychologist Jordan Peterson is a hero of rationality, but to his critics, he's an alt-right transphobe. To his critics, let me let you in on a little secret of the press, of the media, of how journalists work. To his critics is a sleight of hand. It's a, it's a fudge. It's, a, um, it's a, a maneuver that enables the journalist to say about you what they secretly themselves want to say without having to cite anybody else saying it, without having to find out if anybody outside newsrooms and university campuses actually believes that, without having to find out if anyone at all believes that, aside from the specific writer of the piece and perhaps their editor. His critics say in a headline, you'll, you'll find this is a curious pattern, and these, these headlines that say, a cri a critics allege, blah, 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 or according to his critics, blah, blah, blah. very often in the piece itself, it shows no evidence whatsoever. There's no examples, there are no quotes, nothing. But the job has been done by that headline, because people sort of assume, oh, well, headlines are a sort of loose approximation of what the story contains. No, these headlines are being used to uh, confect uh, reputation, rep uh, reputational damage. They used to um, imagine criticisms that don't exist except in the furthest fringes of the far left. Imagine if a headline read, and this is, uh, this is the, the, t the Twitter guy that I mentioned, um, to her critics, Linda Sarsour is an Islamist scam artist who wants to cut women's clits off. Well, that's what they're doing to Jordan Peterson. Um, also, compare the volume of coverage now. Compare the amount of coverage that you've seen about this supposed harassment crisis. And this is repeating itself. It's historic. Again and again, Gamergate, Milo, all this stuff. Compare the amount of coverage that you're seeing about this harassment issue with the amount of coverage about the debate itself. Because it's ignored completely by the left and by the mainstream. Why? Because it embarrassed them so much. It obliterated them. And, and because Kathy Newman looks so retarded in it as well next to somebody who so obviously intellectually outclassed her there's been a problem of my interviewing uh, my interview giving too um so nobody's talking about it anymore this is misdirection they're doing it on purpose this is a strategy it's exactly the point nobody remembers anymore who was saying what that's why they do it it's a disaster for the left but the only thing worse for the left the only bigger disaster for the left would be if kathy newman had received no misogynistic